Well, this was a stunning revelation that happened on Friday. This came after Baldwin's attorney had filed a motion to dismiss the case, essentially accusing the state uh, investigators of misconduct. Uh, so quite a moment there. I will point out, though, that we are now getting the first public comments from actor Alec Baldwin since that stunning decision. In an Instagram post, there's a picture of the uh, actor in court. He says, there are too many people who have supported me to thank just now to all of you. You will never know how much I appreciate your kindness toward my family. And of course, his family was in court throughout this trial, uh, getting very emotional throughout throughout the testimony. But yesterday, I have to tell you, you know, being in that courtroom in a moment that no one really saw, the judge abruptly moved in to ruling on this motion to dismiss, effectively ending this case. Alec Baldwin in tears after the involuntary manslaughter case against the actor was thrown out. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted to ensure the integrity of the judicial system. After the ruling, Baldwin turned to his wife, Hilaria, the two locking in an emotional embrace. The shocking dismissal came at the end of a bizarre series of events in court that saw testimony halted and the jury sit home early in the day. Trials are fluid. It's not something we predicted. Then both sides sparred over ammunition that was turned into the sheriff's office, but wasn't included in the case inventory or tested by the prosecution. Now, this is critical evidence in the case that was never disclosed to us. Your Honor, there have been absolutely no violations of our obligations as prosecutors. Judge Mary Marlowe Summer herself handling the ammunition as she questioned a crime scene technician on whether they were similar to those found on the Rust set. We're securing the scene. Where Baldwin fired a gun that contained a live round, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Prosecutors claim they already determined the ammunition had no value to the case. Do you want to call yourself as a sure. witness? In a moment that turned heads, prosecutor Carrie Morrissey. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Called herself to the witness stand to defend her actions. I did not intend to mislead the court. My understanding of what was dropped off at the sheriff's department is on this computer screen, and it looks absolutely nothing like the live rounds from the set of rust. But additional ammunition was also turned in, and the defense questioned a crime scene technician on whether they could be a match. Again, I wouldn't use the word match without further analysis. And, and the reason that we don't have further analysis is you all didn't send this to the FBI for further analysis, did you? We did not. It was enough for the judge to throw the case out. As she made a ruling, Baldwin's family, including his actor brother Stephen and their sister, huddled in tears behind the defense table. Baldwin left court without speaking to reporters. The importance of the evidence was misconstrued. The prosecutor addressing questions about the certain letdown for the family of the victim, Helena Hutchins, whose relatives followed the case from their home in war-torn Ukraine. Did you let the Hutchins family down? Uh, no, we didn't. We did everything humanly possible to bring justice uh, to Helena and to her family, and we're proud of the work that we did. Uh, again, we disagree with the court's decision, but we have to respect it. And it's so important to remember in this case, there was a victim who was killed, Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer. Now, acclaimed attorney Gloria Allred is a representative of the Hutchins family. She has been in court throughout this trial. She just spoke to us a moment ago and mentioned that there are still civil lawsuits uh, underway against Alec Baldwin. She told us that for the family, this isn't over. We'll fight to the end. We'll fight to the end. And we are going to fight to the end for Helena Hutchins. And finally, it's important to note as far as the criminal case goes here, and our uh, friend uh, Misty Maris can attest to this, the critical ruling here from the judge is that this came what's called with prejudice, which means that prosecutors cannot bring these charges back against Alec Baldwin. Fred, this case is over. Wow. Okay. Even though, as you just had Gloria Allred saying, they're going to still pursue something. At least they won't be able to in this criminal path, though. Uh, Misty Maris uh, with us now. So this is a... A big error, right? This is a withholding evidence, whether intentional or not, a kind of error. How often does something like this happen? This was actually very shocking and almost mind boggling from the perspective of this case, where the central issue for both Hannah Gutierrez Reed's trial and Alec Baldwin's trial was how live ammunition actually got onto that set. So what the judge actually determined is that withholding of this evidence was actually intentional and deliberate. Fred, that means there's serious yeah. prosecutorial misconduct in this case because evidence that should have been turned over wasn't. And to answer your question, 
It does not happen that often. It is rare. It's because it's the prosecutor's obligation, both ethically and their duty as an officer of the court, to turn over any and all relevant evidence, not to make unilateral decisions, like we saw here in this case, about whether or not something matters to the trial. Those are evidentiary issues for the judge to decide. So this was truly a stunning turn of events. So given that then, does that now open the door for Baldwin to in some way go after the prosecutor's office for some sort of accountability because you just underscored that, you know, you do believe that it is intentional or in some way, um, I don't know, get some sort of payback, so to speak. I mean, a lot of time, yeah. time and money, reputation on the line, all that has been spent. If you're Alec Baldwin. Yes, you're absolutely mm -hmm. right, Fred. So the judge's determination spoke volumes. And that's because the judge used those words that I just used, intentional, deliberate. She said there was scorching prejudice. It was at least bad faith, or if not bad faith, right up there on the line of bad faith. So that that's what throws out this case, which is the most serious consequence that can happen in a criminal court, to actually toss the case, say it can't be brought again with prejudice. But to your question, there are certainly avenues that could be pursued for prosecution uh, that was not fueled by justice, but was fueled by vengeance or something of the like. Will he pursue that? I doubt it. However, what will likely happen is there will be an inquiry, an ethical inquiry will be required mm. to make a determination about why and how this happened and to investigate the prosecution's process in this case and potentially impact the prosecutor. These were special prosecutors, keep in mind, themselves yeah. as to what occurred here, which could have ethical consequences. Uh, Josh, uh, how about for Hannah Gutierrez? I mean, she was going to be called to testify. Then stuff went sideways on that one. But then she has been you know, sentenced. She's been serving some time. Uh, this is a case that involves her, too. What are her t attorneys saying about what their potential avenues might be next. Yeah, and as Missy just a signal there, I mean, this goes far beyond Alec Baldwin himself. There mm -hmm. is another a defendant who was sentenced, as you mentioned, the armorer who was on the set. Uh, she was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. Her attorney already says that they are uh, they were in the process of appealing her case, but in light of this new evidence that prosecutors and investigators may have withheld uh, critical evidence, ammunition that may have matched live rounds on that set, mm -hmm. uh, that is something that they are certainly looking into. They think that that bolsters their case. And, you know, finally, it's important to point out that this whole prosecution of Alec Baldwin has been riddled with issues from the very beginning. I mean, all of us remember uh, I was right here in Santa Fe early last year when the charges were first brought. They were later dismissed. Uh, authorities said that, uh, quote, new facts came to light. There was a special prosecutor on the case who email surfaced about her saying that essentially uh, she, she's a legislator here uh, in New Mexico, that this case could be politically advantageous to her. Uh, and then obviously we get to the what happened yesterday where the judge just really laying into prosecutors. I, you know, I'll mention also why we were in court yesterday. One of the special prosecutors abruptly resigned. And so you really saw mm. the prosecution's case begin to unravel throughout the day yesterday, leading to that stunning dismissal. Wow. Potentially recusing that person or, uh, you know, from that ethical inquiry that you talk about, Misty, that might be happening mm. or somehow remove uh, themselves from that.